Hello and welcome to another VRTK tutorial video. In this video we're going to show how we can set up a wheel that we can control with both hands. Please consider becoming a VRTK patron. There are plenty of membership levels to sign up at and it really helps to fund these videos. So in our scene we have our basic game object set up. I've got this wheel that looks like a valve and that's what we're going to use as our wheel in this example. So to start with, we can just select our wheel object. This is the thing that would actually rotate. So if we rotate this around the Z axis, we can see that that moves as we expect. And we're going to turn the wheel into our controllable. So we go to Window, Tilia, Interactions, Controllable Creator, and then we're just going to choose the Angular Transform Drive. And with that selected, we click Convert, and we can see our wheel has now turned into the Angular Transform Drive prefab. We can now close the Controllable Creator down. And with the Angular Transform Drive selected, we will update our Angular Drive facade settings. The first thing we're going to do is change our drive axis. So we want it to rotate around that Z axis. So we'll change that to Z. The next thing we'll do is we're going to change our ungrabbed drag so it doesn't spin as much when we let go. So we'll put that at around 5. And then our grab drag, because we're going to make this a two-handed wheel, what we actually want to do is make it feel like it's harder to turn when only one controller is grabbing it. And then when we grab it with both controllers, it will become easy to turn. So what we're going to do is actually just double this up. So if a grabbed drag of one would make it easy with one controller, we want a grabbed drag of two. And that will mean it's harder to turn with one controller. But when we grab it with two controllers, it will divide that. So that will become a grab drag of one when both controllers are grabbing it. And finally, we need to set up our drive limit. So we're going to have this so we can turn it minus 270 to the left and 270 to the right. So we just need to put minus 270 and 270. And there we go, we've set up our wheel now. So if we were to run the scene at this point, we'd be able to grab that wheel and we'd be able to move it, but it only work tracking one controller because by default, the controllables, when we grab them, the first controller controls it. And then when we grab it with the second controller, that just performs a swap action, which means our second controller would be the one that takes over control in the object. But what we want in this situation is if we grab it with our right hand, we can control it. And if we grab it with our left hand, we can control it. And if we let go of either hand, we're still controlling it with the other one. So we're going to look at how we can customize these Tilia prefabs now to get the functionality to work the way we expect it to. So we're going to drill down into what's going on inside this prefab. And because the controllable prefab just uses an interactable internally to work, we can go and look at that. We can click on the show interactable facade container. And that will drill us right down into that object, which is what we want to change next. And the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure we've got this ticked attempt swap secondary for primary. So what this will do is when we grab with our primary and then grab with our secondary, if we release a primary, it will attempt to swap the secondary grab to become our primary grab, which is what we want. We don't want it to just drop. So we're just going to tick this. And then, as I said, we can see our secondary action by default is just set up to swap. We don't want it to swap. What we want it to do is be another follow action. So we're going to change this to be a follow action. So just select follow from the list. And then we just need to replicate what settings are on the primary action. So the follow tracking goes to follow transform position difference rotate. And we need to make sure our grab offset is set to position point. And we can now see our secondary action settings are mirroring our primary action settings. But now we need to also update some more internals of our prefab so these secondary action settings actually work the way the primary action settings do. So we're going to do that by going and viewing the secondary action game object and we can just click the little eye here. That takes us right down into the correct game object here. And then we need to go to the thing that's doing that rotate around the position difference. So we can just click down on the reference game object down here, this follow transform rotate on position difference. And that will show us this game object here. And if we expand this, we can see inside here, there's the rotation game object. And this transform position difference rotation component is what's doing that rotation for us. And let's just make sure we know where this game object is, because we're going to be using it in a moment. And if we now go up to the internal game object of our drive, we can see this has some rotation modifiers in here. This only knows about the primary one by default. We're going to update this so it now knows about our secondary one as well. So we're going to change this to two. So we've got two elements of our array. And then in the second element, we're going to put in that rotation. So the rotation from the secondary game object that we just found becomes the rotation element of our element one in our rotation modifier. And that means now when we set up our drive, it will not only tell the primary rotation modifier what settings it needs, it will also now tell that secondary one that we've just set up what settings it needs as well. 
And now the final thing we need to do is just update our velocity controls. So if we expand our velocity controls and we look in the apply grabbed drag, we can see in here this is applying the grabbed drag information on the primary action. We just need to apply this to the secondary action as well. So again, we're just going to add another listener, drag in our rotation from our secondary action. And then in the function on position difference rotation, we just need to set the angular drag and make sure it's a dynamic float one. And there we go, we've now set this up. So we've given our angular transform drive a custom secondary action of follow, and we've customized the inner workings of it so it works the same as the primary one. We can now collapse all this down, and we should be ready to jump into the scene and see this working. So we're now in the scene, we can see our wheel is set up. If I was to grab it with one hand, we can see we can rotate that wheel around. And if I was to grab it with the other hand, we can rotate it as well. It's quite slow, but if I was to grab it with one hand and move it and then grab it with the other hand, it starts moving a lot quicker as we expect. And if I will release one controller, it carries on going but a bit slower. And if I grab it and release it with the other controller, it goes slower as well. And again, we can go back to grabbing it with two and we can keep rotating our wheel around until it gets to that limit. And there we go, we've set up our wheel. I hope this video has been useful to you. If it has, please consider subscribing to the YouTube channel. Leave any likes, dislikes, comments down below. Please consider becoming a VRTK patron. And I'll see you for the next video. Thanks for watching and bye for now.